Hey guys, uh, we're going to learn a little bit about um, some questions with uh, energy in a rotational system, specifically the uh, pendulum problem that I referred to, which is any kind of a question where you have, say, a bar held in a horizontal position that falls down from here to the, say, vertical position. Or it could be something like you'll see in the homework, specifically, where they have a um, cylinder which pivots from that point and which therefore is going to fall down to that orientation there. Okay, so a pendulum problem then, any, anything where it's swinging on a pivot, right, and, and therefore you have some amount of gravitational potential energy in this position becoming rotational kinetic energy at the bottom of its motion. All right, the specific example that we're going to work out is this one right here. So I drew a very simplified picture of a rod, right? It's just a line. Um, and I'm saying that it's going to pivot about this point L over 3 from the end. We've done that question in class a bunch of times. But I figured it wouldn't hurt to do it again. Uh, and I didn't want to do the exact same question that you're going to have on the homework. So uh, it's pivoting about this point that's L over 3 from the end. And I'm going to have it go from this vertical orientation to this vertical orientation. So it's swinging around like that. Sorry, let's try that again, like this. OK? All right. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to try and sort out here is what is the moment of inertia of the rod? Now, since this one's not pivoting about the middle, nor is it pivoting about the end, we would actually have to go through and calculate. We've done that a bunch of times, but the reason I'm including this step here, even though we've done it before, is because when you see this question on your homework that I drew up a moment ago, right, you're going to actually have to go through that exact same process. You're not going to be able to use just the moment of inertia that you look up from a table for a solid cylinder. It's going to be a solid cylinder that doesn't pivot about the middle, right? It pivots about one side. Therefore, it's not 1 half mr squared. It's going to be something that you get from parallel axis theorem. All right, now remember in parallel axis theorem, ICM is whatever the moment of inertia through the center of mass is, which you look up in a table. In the case of this rod that I'm going to work out, we have 1 12th ml squared. All right, the D is always the distance between the center of mass and the pivot. So that would be probably the center of mass is right in the middle, so therefore, that distance is, again, we've done this before, but if that's L over 2 and this is L over 3, then that means this is L over 6. Okay, so then we would have plus M times L over 6 squared. We do a little bit of algebra here, which I'm going to gloss over in the video because we've done this in class, and you can do it at home. You get 1 9th ML squared. All right, now, to answer this question, like what's the final angular velocity, right? What I'm saying is it's going to swing down, right? The center of mass goes from here to here. Most of the questions that you're going to see, it's only swinging around like 90 degrees, right? It's going from the horizontal position to the lower vertical position. Um, and if we did this one that same way, right, I started at the horizontal position, right, that it wouldn't be any major stretch. But I did it like this because I wanted you to see a little bit of variety in how we can set it up. Because it doesn't always have to start horizontal, right, it could start vertical and swing all the way down around. Okay, regardless, the setup is going to be, well, it has gravitational potential energy in its initial orientation. That energy is becoming rotational kinetic energy. And unlike the other two types of energy problems that we did in class, um, you're not going to have any translational kinetic energy, right? When something rolls down an incline, it acquires 
rotational kinetic energy, but also translational kinetic energy because it's going somewhere. In this case, it, the rod's not really going anywhere, right? It's attached to the pivot. It can't leave. So therefore, you're not going to say it has any translational kinetic energy, just the rotational. Okay. So that'll be one half I omega squared. All right, it's the gravitational potential energy part that people usually mess up to one extent or another. So let's let's talk about the H. Two common mistakes. The H is how far like the end of the rod falls. No, it is not how far the end of the rod falls. Uh, all right, and then what do we? Use? So that's usually what people end up doing, is they pick the, some point on the rod that they shouldn't be using. The thing that we think about as falling is the center of mass. That's where gravity acts, so that means that that is what is falling, right? So the center of mass is falling from here to there, the way I've done this. If you're doing this question on the homework, then the center of mass is falling from here to there. Right. Okay. Fine. So falling through 90 degrees, in this case that's just the radius of the object. The way I've done this up, if this is L over 6 and this is another L over 6, the height that it's falling is L over 3. That's coincidentally the same distance, same as this distance here. It's just that it's two L over 6s. So to make it less confusing, I'm going to say two times L over 6 in my work. Okay, and then we'll do a little bit of algebra, right? Um, this is going to simplify to MgL over 3. This was 1 ninth ML squared. One half of that will be 1 18th ML squared. All right, one of those L's cancels. Um, factor of six left over, the M's cancel. All right, so our omega value is gonna be square root of six G over L. Okay. So that's the angular velocity. Now you have to pay attention to what they're asking. Okay, if they say, what's the angular velocity, you're done. If they say, though, what is the final velocity of the center of mass um, or of some other part on the rod, um, we've done this trick now a couple of times um, where we say, all right, linear and angular quantities are related by the radius of the object or the distance some point on the object is from the pivot. So if you want to know the velocity of the center of mass, it's a little cm down there, um, the angular velocity is that answer that we just got. R, the center of mass is L over 6 away from the pivot. So you would use L over 6 for R. Okay, since it's under the 6 and the L, the, the other 6 and L are under the radical, those one will cancel out, we'll get velocity of the center mass is square root of GL over 6. That's the speed of our center of mass. Right, GL over root GL over 6. The speed of the end of the rod is going to be, again, we'll just take that angular velocity, root 6g over L, and we'll multiply it by a different distance. The far end of the rod is 2 thirds L away from the pivot. So we'll have a slight bit more math here, simplifying that out. See, that's 4, 24 over 9, which is 6. No, hold on. Okay. So we'll get root 8g 
GL over 3 for our speed of the end of the rod. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, if not, then you'll have lots of questions tomorrow in class, and that is, that is fine. We will make sure especially to go over these in class because we didn't talk about them uh, in person. Um, but do the best you can on it, um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks very much.